I went to my first nighttime car meet in 2010, and we might as well lived on a different planet back then. But my generation of car enthusiasts say that car culture is trash now, and it just will never be the same. So what is my opinion on all this? Well, it's complicated. Let's get into it. Ah yes, 2012. Stance was in. Camber and slam shows were all the rage. H2O was crazy, but not a state of emergency for the city of Ocean City. Eat, sleep, freaking race. Illist, can I beat? Forza Horizon 1, Porter Robinson's language. You could also buy a 240SX for under $1,000. So project cars are a lot more accessible, at least for entry. But building cars was still expensive regardless. Nissan Skylines had not hit the shores of the United States legally. If you made more than 500 horsepower, you were probably the fastest dude in your area. Anything above that, it would probably work twice a year and be on jack stands the rest of the time. Instagram was about food pictures and selfies primarily. Car culture had not taken off that way online. But first, for my perspective, we need to talk about where I physically was in 2012 and what world I was truly born into an obsessive car nut. It's a military town. And if you weren't in the military, you either knew somebody in the military or you had a family member in the military. Virginia Beach has crazy culture influences, but more in a stealthy way. Music artists like Pharrell, The Neptunes, Missy Elliott, Timbaland, all these guys came out of Virginia Beach. But when it came to influences coming into Virginia Beach, the car culture was super interesting. Projects would lie in wait of their owners coming back from intense combat deployments overseas as their post-deployment therapy. In Richmond, Virginia, only an hour and a half away, had East Coast Honda meet, but the biggest meet in Virginia Beach was called Spring Fest, which still goes on to this day. Now, let me be absolutely clear. Virginia Beach was not a huge car scene like New York City or SoCal. But here's why it's important on the East Coast. You had people stationed here from everywhere, bringing their taste of car culture wherever they were from. The first dance car I ever saw was a guy stationed there who grew up in Southern California. I had people in the lifted trucks from Alaska. My friend Sean with Nessa the Evo, as we called it, was from the US Virgin Islands and brought some of his influences. Virginia Beach's geography was super unique because with Norfolk Naval Base next door, you had underwater tunnels in the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, which was insane. The tunnels, if you're not familiar, are for the Navy's big battleships and aircraft carriers to go over rather than under a bridge. Skateboarding in that culture and cars had a tight grip as a bond. And that's how I got into it. But it was mostly an import car scene. And this is where I rode in my first fast car, a 750 horsepower Mitsubishi Evo. <laughs> Virginia Beach had Southern hospitality combined with military discipline, or lack thereof. As a 20 year old me, it was a great way to prime my social skills dealing with different parts of the United States and different attitudes and perspectives getting stationed there. All right, so I've laid down the groundwork of where I was in 2012, and you might be saying, why focus on this place first? Well, it's because of all this outside influence. In 2012, having underglow was uncool. Body kits and big wings were considered dumb, and you were basically a ricer or a poser in the scene, but also trying to find the cheapest way to boost a car. Fast and Furious was an influence for everyone, but you didn't want to admit it that much. A way into the car scene as a hobby, but it was kind of like, oh, we're past those times of big body kits. Only a few YouTube car channels even existed, and most were major magazines like Motor Trend. Me trying to tell people to watch automotive YouTube was like pulling teeth. People saw YouTube as just for cat videos and stupid things. Well, the car influence you had was the people around you and forums, a lost art. Good God, freaking forums. A place where you ask a question and get trolled and called terrible names for six posts before one guy finally gave you the right answer or said, 
If you've searched this topic before, there's a thread about it. You should have looked it up before coming here. But the amount of effort people put into some of these posts is pretty extraordinary. So the biggest difference between 2012 and 2022 is what I call the quote unquote underground scene. If you went to a night tame car meet or racing meet, you probably accidentally found it or a friend showed you. You almost had to have an in. You had to be invited or you earned the respect when you came on your own. Cars and coffees were small meetups stuffed in tiny parking lots that were from word of mouth. You didn't have posters or flyers online constantly bombarding events or nighttime meets. It was still overall an underground scene and hard to find without some guidance. However, this mentality brought a very tight bond with friends in this community, and social media was a complete afterthought. I know this makes me sound nostalgic, but the secrecy of these meets also kept them alive for the most part. Doing donuts and being an idiot in the parking lot was uncool, and you probably weren't welcome back. You were seen as a menace, not a cool guy. Live streaming dumb things and doing donuts weren't really a thing in Virginia Beach with no social media, but more on that later. The bigger the meet, the riskier it actually was to finally get kicked out. So it was good to kind of find this sweet spot of the amount of people that you invited or let in. People also built their cars for their own validation mostly, or unfortunately, the validation of their small car meet in their town to impress their friends. Rarely was it for the attention online other than some forums to show off how they did it. But I will say, Motorsports was mostly autocross and drag racing for 20 bucks a pop at your local test and tune and drag strip. Drifting was nearly non-existent in this area of the country and many others, nor was it very accessible. So we've gotten 2012 as a basis out of the way. So what about 2022? Stance is somehow still around. I'm honestly surprised. Car shows are the largest they've probably ever been. Electric cars are trying to take over. All gasoline is bad. Lithium mines, what's wrong with those? Crazy dealer markups. JDM cars are now collector items or TikTok cloud. Takeovers are lowering the freaking IQ of car culture and giving it a bad name. You live stream these things for attention and don't think about the consequences. The biggest thing I've noticed in my car scene generation, not going to nighttime or small car meets anymore, and this isn't because they grew out of it. It's because it is different. And I want to be clear that we all have rose-colored glasses from eras of our lives, but I can tell you, I think it's true. I think the scene at night especially has become almost unrecognizable at times. I went to car meets at night for community and to learn more from other enthusiasts who had more knowledge than me. Or the other way around, I would go to teach others. And if shenanigans did happen, nobody knew about it. And I mean nobody. It was you told no one, including the internet. You wanted to see one car was faster than another? Guess what? Nobody else knew about it and you would tell stories later. The internet has made building cars look easy, that it takes no time, hardly any money, and building 1200 horsepower is no problem, therefore it isn't as impressive. Shoot, even I'm guilty of doing project videos to be quote unquote different, and it honestly just bit me in the butt. Younger viewers ask me, what is the big thing that changed nighttime car culture in 10 years? You know, since they had never experienced it. The easy answer is the social media and of course, takeovers. Posting videos online making car people look stupid and a problem to society rather than a close tight-knit community that's healthy. Causing trouble for attention rather than being a troublemaker in the shadows if you so choose. 2022 is about public intersections versus middle of nowhere racing in the dark in 2012. <laughs> Also a thing I've noticed is that car loving is now basically a fashion statement. Skylines and JDM cars are now on album covers, but typically people who follow cars as a trend or fashion tend to act like they know about cars more than just 
asking the right questions. I know this makes me sound cynical, but here's an example. About three years ago, I went to a nighttime car meet where a kid showed me his 350Z that was supercharged. His group of friends were standing around me as they popped the hood. Here's the problem. <laughs> there was no supercharger. It just had a whiny belt system that needed to be replaced. But nobody in that entire big group of people corrected him, not a single person. They literally didn't know. I had to be that guy. So this man drove around for months thinking he had a supercharged 350Z and kept posting it online for attention to show how fast this car was. If I had done that at a meet 10 years ago, I'd probably be so made fun of, it would be too embarrassing to go back to that car meet. And then I would probably have to go back online and do my research and read 60 forums about it. But I know that this all sounds negative. Here's some positives of 2022. Cars are the fastest they've ever been. You can buy cars with 800 horsepower with a warranty. The aftermarket support is the best catalog of all time for multiple platforms. Standalone ECUs are incredible and have cars run six second quarter mile times. The knowledge sharing of the internet has created did some of the most fantastic car builds in the world. Car YouTube is a behemoth in entertainment no matter the taste you have. There's something for everybody. Entire genres of music inspired by car culture like drift funk. Finding car culture is easier than ever and accessible more than ever. You can probably hop on Facebook right now and find a car event going on you can plan to go to this weekend. Cars and Coffees are still a family-friendly birth of future car enthusiasts. The manual transmission is still alive. Toyota built sports cars again. The choices in sports cars are so good that it's mostly preference. Underglow is back. Liveries and graphics are a nostalgic way to look back at the early 2000s and for the most part are socially acceptable. Respecting all builds can go a little too far sometimes because there is such thing as bad taste for attention and people fall for that, but for the most part, it's fine. To close all this out, I asked my Facebook of all my car friends what their opinion on 2022 versus 2012 was, and obviously takeovers was the biggest gripe. But some people had some great perspectives, including my friend Sam. I think car culture for myself in 2012 was about getting together with your friends from school, those you met at gas stations and on the road, then hanging out in a way that wasn't always centered around cars. Mods were staying up late throwing coilovers on your buddy car, rolling some fenders and some chrome wheels, and maybe some exhaust too. From there you had a clean car. It was just about the boys hanging out and cruising with our cars. Now it's about trying to one up each other, trying to outdo the next guy and gatekeep mods on their build to seem unique. I think these are valid points in a lot of ways, to be honest. With that perspective, Alex said car culture seems increasingly about showing off. A Supra doing two steps surrounded by a bunch of dudes in black sweatshirts filming with their phones constitutes a meet now. <laughs> There's an exception to this rule though. Track culture hasn't changed hardly at all. It's only gotten more accessible. Track culture is about getting things done and enjoying the company of people who share your goals to go faster. So it takes a lot of the social media issues away since it isn't as attention seeking compared to what else we talked about. So has 2022 gotten worse? Well, I think car culture is more accessible than ever, which is fantastic. But my best advice to my younger viewers, stay away from the BS takeovers, go to a freaking track day of your motorsport of choice and go to things like caffeine and octane or cars and coffee for a true piece of the community. And last, go help your freaking friend with their car. You don't have to be an expert to be morally supportive. My takeaway of car culture after all these years is in the end, it's about the people. You are who you hang out with and that goes with any hobby in this life. Cars bring people together for better, or for worse. What is your particular opinion about all this? Do you have a favorite memory of the past 10 years or did you have a favorite year in car culture? Put it down in the comment section below. Also, if you'd like to support this channel, head over to Patterson Car Care. It's my own personal detail brand that is made right here in the USA, including our Brake Dust Pro, which is basically cheating cleaning your wheels. So thank you guys so much once again for watching this video and I will see you guys next time. I upload on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays and have a wonderful wonderful day. Goodbye.